Good evening. I'd like to welcome students, staff, faculty, and visitors and friends to the AAMI Fall 2015 Speaker Series, A New Beginning. The education of a young mind. It takes place behind closed doors because that mind initially free has to be taught the value of freedom. The education of a young mind takes place in an open space because that mind once closed has to be set free to explore itself. Once again, you are welcome. I hope you enjoy the program. My name is Jeffrey Taylor. Our speaker for today is a financial analyst at Voya Financial in Atlanta, Georgia. In 2004, he graduated from Hephzibah High School and started college at Georgia Southwestern State University. During his time at Georgia Southwestern, he was active in several student organizations and held several leadership positions. He received his BBA degree in accounting and his MBA from Georgia Southwestern. After receiving his MBA in 2010, he moved to Atlanta, where he obtained employment by the Department of Revenue as a revenue agent, resolving tax debt primarily after reviewing settlement cases assigned to his division. After three years with the Department of Revenue, he accepted an accounting position with Voya Financial, which is his current employer. He also remains active in the community. He's currently a member of Voya's community partners, Void Community Partners projects throughout the Atlanta and metro area. He also served as a high school and youth recreation basketball coach every year following his time in college. His contributions of Georgia Southwestern include the following organizations. Student Alumni Ambassador, Fall 2004 through Spring 2006. In addition to that, the Gentlemen's Club, Fall 2004 through Spring 2008. Student African American Brotherhood, Fall 2006 through Spring 2009, as well as the Saab President, 2007 through 2008. He's also a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, Spring 2007 through Spring 2010, and was also the Alpha Phi Alpha President from 2007 through 2008. Residence Life, Fall 2007 through Spring 2010. The Student Government Association, Fall 2007 through Spring 2010 as well as the student government president from 2008 through 2010. National Residence Hall Honorary, spring 2008 through 2010, and GSW Scythe, now known as Inactus, fall 2008 through 2010. Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm hurricane welcome back home to our speaker today, Mr. Andrew Robinson. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to take the time to thank Mr. Anderson and African American Male Initiative to have me here to speak today. Uh, it's my honor to be back here uh, where I attended college uh, for six years, four undergrad and two uh, pursuing a graduate degree. Um, I, I feel humbled by coming back uh, because, you know, I, I feel like I've learned so much in college, but I'm doing just what anyone else is doing. Um, but I have been that way ever since uh, prior to coming here. Currently, I'm a financial analyst, uh, as, as uh, the welcome stated earlier. I'm in charge of compiling forms for filing uh, to our state health insurance departments uh, with our company, and I provide assistance with compiling aggregations to make the process more efficient uh, for my company going forward. Um, not to bore you with my current profession, but just wanted to touch base on what I'm doing now. If you told me that, if you, if you told me that's what I was going to do in 2004, I wouldn't have been ready. 2004 was my freshman year. So if, I, if you would have told me that my sophomore year, I wouldn't have understood what you were saying. Sometimes, when you're in your pro profession after college, you'll encounter different circumstances that you're not ready for, but what you do when you get there matters most. You may look in the mirror and think to yourself, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm hired here, I have a new position, I don't know what they want me to do. But don't worry about it. Stay in there, do not give up. 
And you'll see that in your classroom. You'll see that in your classroom from day to day, and later, in just a few minutes, I'll share some, some trials I had uh, that I dealt with in a classroom. But you'll see that in the classroom. You'll see that in student organizations. You'll see that where you have those challenges you have to encounter, you have to face head on. If you don't ha face it head on, somebody else will. But you don't want that to be someone else. You want it to be you. Um, I want to start off by talking about my life prior to coming to college. Before attending uh, Georgia Southwestern, my family moved around a lot. So I was used to meeting new people, um, being, uh, adjusting to my surroundings, learning from my environment, things of that nature. I was used to that. I was used to living in a good neighborhood one minute, and then in the next minute, I'm not, I'm not in a good area. Um, if anyone is from Augusta, Georgia, um, uh, from Barton Village, <laughs> if you know what that is like, then I don't have to say anything else. But um, my father wasn't really present for eight of those years, but when my parents were together, they pushed me to work hard in, in school. They did not accept bad grades. A C was a bad grade, a, a B was a bad grade, and I'm not an overachiever, so I, I had a mix of A's and B's. I didn't really care, but my, my parents, no. They didn't want that. My mom, no. Um, so I, I knew that from an early age, I wanted something better for myself. Throughout the time I spent in middle school and in high school, I had my surroundings that reminded me every day that I did not want to live that life. I wanted something better. I wanted to create something better for my, my kids, my future kids. Um, I didn't want to lack in an area where I can't provide them what they need in life. And I strived hard uh, in high school, and I eventually became an honor graduate from Hefsaba High School right outside of Augusta, Georgia. Um, I could have been valedictorian, but physics messed me up. But you know, hey, such is life. Um, growing up, even though my father was kind of present at different parts of my life, I still had male role models within my family, and with uh, both my biological family and within my church family. And I made sure I accepted their advice, heeded their advice, took it with caution. Even if, even if um, certain advice didn't apply to me, I still made sure that I stuck with it and I learned from it. I take pride in learning a lot from uh, those male role models I had growing up. Uh, they wouldn't allow me to fail, and they didn't want anyone that they knew to fail either. Um, so I knew from an early age that I wanted to be the type of man that my future sons can look up to. Um, I, was, I, I did touch on being inspired you know, by my surrounding, and just as many of you who are sitting here, you've encountered struggles yourself. Uh, you dealt, you've dealt with growing up, classmates, whether in middle school, whether in high school, um, they're preferring to party and, and you may decide, do you want to party with them or do you want to hang out, do you want to do nothing, shoot the breeze or, or do you want to study? I didn't have an interest um, in doing the extra stuff that didn't apply with education, mostly from fear of my mother. Um, my mother's going to beat me, she's not going to beat y'all. Like, speaking to my friends, she's not going to beat my friends, but she's going to beat me. I have to deal with that when I get home. And I did not want that at all. But um, during my senior year, as I was getting ready to apply for colleges, I looked for out-of-state schools mostly because I didn't want to go to school in Augusta. Augusta has Payne College, a uh, historically black uh, college university. And they also have Augusta State, which is now Georgia Regents University, I believe. Um, but I did not want to attend school there. Uh, I knew I wanted to venture out. And Georgia Southwestern was one of the in-state schools I applied to. The reason why I chose Georgia Southwestern is because those out-of-state schools, I did not want to seek a loan to, to pay 
uh, pay for that tuition while Georgia Southwestern is offering me uh, an academic scholarship I'm getting a HOPE scholarship from Georgia and the other in-state schools were dragging, dragging their feet around my paperwork. While Georgia Southwestern already had my room and board ready, they already had my classes ready, they had everything. So I decided to, to come here. Um, my first thought when I came here may be similar to what you had. My first thought was, why did I come here? Like there's nothing to do. And when can I transfer? I told my moms I was, I, I, was, I, I need to transfer, I need to leave. I, as soon as I got here, I said, there's nothing here. I don't know why I picked this school. I made a mistake, I'm upset. My mom, she was like, <laughs> she said, all right, all right, we'll take you home, baby, you know, all that sweet stuff, whatever like that. And then when I looked at that, I was like, no, nah, man, I, nah, I'm a, I'll, I'll stay around. I'll stay around if I transfer, I'll transfer later. But, you know, I was just like, that, that put me in check. When mom gave me that response, like, okay, okay. I'm like, yeah, nah. So, so I did stick it out. Um, it took a while because I still wanted to transfer as time went on. Um, but that desire to transfer uh, slowly deteriorated as I became more involved with student organizations, as well as um, becoming involved with having uh, college life out, outside of the campus. Uh, so as, as friends were having road trips, as student organizations needed help with um, certain objectives, certain meetings, certain events, just became more involved and more focused with school. And after a while, I got used to it. I got used to uh, being here. Um, it did take a while, but I know a, a, a big part of that was being a part of the Student Alumni Ambassadors and Mr. A's Gentlemen's Club, that really helped, helped me stay here. Uh, taking a group of guys that are willing to work together, work on events, actually meet upperclassmen, and learn the tips and tricks of, of how to work the school system, that really helped me, as well as working with the Student Alumni Ambassadors, where we're communicating with, with donors with school donors, we're communicating with alumni that kind of feed your interest to learn more. And they share their life, their work experiences when they come here. We actively listen. We give feedback, we, pro we provide uh, feedback on what we're experiencing in the classroom. They tell us to keep going. And I felt like those two organizations really started, um, uh, really removed the sense of, I need to leave. The activities that we had my freshman year, they stuck me here. Um, and I mentioned, I did mention that. Uh, my, okay. Yeah, see, I'm going, I'm, I'm going forward a little bit. But um, back to grades, as I mentioned earlier. My first midterm grades were, were the, uh, uh, was my wake-up call. I was taking five classes, one of them being University 1000, so you know, 13 credits. Uh, I think that's the standard they try to give everyone, 13 credits. Um, my midterm grades, I had two C's, two D's, one F. Growing up, I had, you know, I'm all, well, not all A's, some A's, some B's, whatever, I'm, I'm making it through, eventually honors. Um, as, long as, as long as I have a, a, you know, a good grade, I'm good, you know. So I wasn't used to failing academically. I never had to experience that. And of course, when you see that, when, you, when you're expecting that you're doing okay, but you, you, you know you're a little lost, but you don't know how lost you are. But when you see that, you, know, you see the two C's, two D's, and an F, and one of the D's was University 1000. You know life is hard. You know you are not doing something right. I don't know if University 1000 progressed any, but my University 1000 consisted of us uh, watching movies, talking, that's it. Like all we did was talk, the teacher would talk with us. The teacher would, I don't know how it is now. I don't wanna talk bad about your professors. Maybe you, know, you're, you, you have certain workbooks or you got certain books you're reading, I don't know. But back then, 
Um, you know, it was just a real laid back class, and I still had a D in that. And, you know, I was upset, I was frustrated. Um, I didn't want to talk to anybody. And, you know, I felt like no one understood me. And I did feel like giving up. Just when I was getting used to living in America, so getting used to um, the college life, I get hit with that. Um, I could have stayed down, but I chose to pick myself up and move forward. I ended up finishing with two A's, two B's, and one C. I couldn't pull the F all the way up past the C, but, <laughs> but what I want to explain to you and reiterate later is that progress can always be made. Don't look at your current situation as a downfall. Don't look at if you're struggling in one class that you're a failure your whole life. Because after college, you're going to be in your career. And you may not perform a function correctly your first time or correctly for a while, but you're not a failure. So if you stay strong and you stay together, you'll be fine. Uh, but that midterm was a wake up call. I'm glad midterm is not official, so it's not officially on my transcript. You know, it's you know, two C's, two D's, one F. You know, that, that's for us to know in the room, you know. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm glad I picked that up. And the following semester, uh, my second semester finishing out freshman year, I uh, was on the dean's list. So I received a 3.5 uh, for that semester, which kind of shows that progress can be made. And the way progress can be made or the way I look at it is performing self-evaluations. Be willing to perform self-evaluations. I perform self-evaluations in the classroom. I perform self-evaluations with things going on personally. And I also do that in my career. Um, first, identify what you're doing right or wrong. I wasn't doing anything right my first semester. So you know, it was easy, you know, next check. What am I doing wrong? Everything. You know, that's all I could write. Um, next, think of ways that you can improve your situation. What are you lacking in? What are you not paying attention to? What is taking away your time? Are you constructively studying? Are you just reading just to read? Or are you constructively studying? Are you trying to read every word of the book instead of reading a summary of the book? Going through one time, few sentences, each paragraph, then going over everything. I think, I know a large part of what I was doing was I was trying to read everything. I was trying to use the same method I used in high school and apply it to college, which I can say for one, if you do not self-evaluate, you won't change that. I, wouldn't, I would not have changed that. I would have tried to apply the same logic that I used in high school. And I would have continued to fail, presumably. The third, the third step is develop a plan, a course of action. That's important. And the fourth and final step is the execution of that plan. Staying close to as the designed plan as possible. Be mindful that deviations from your plan can result in error. Not, not in every instance, but you are susceptible to that if you deviate from your plan. But the most important part is having that plan. But you won't know what your plan is if you don't know what you need to improve on. And you don't know what you need to improve on if you don't look at your situation to figure out what is right and what is wrong. What are you doing that is causing you success? And what are you doing that's holding you back? Um, I touched on academics. Now I want to go, uh, go dig in a little deeper into social involvement on campus and off campus. I mentioned earlier that becoming involved with student organizations and branching out and enjoying a life off of campus uh, didn't make America seem so bad at all. Macon's only an hour away. Um, that's, that's if you're not speeding. Uh, Albany's only, you know, 30 minutes. You know, 30 minutes. That's if you're not speeding. <laughs> but so, you know, you have places you can go to, um, you know, if you just want to break uh, from America. So it ended up not being so bad. But the uh, social involvement I touched on, the organizations I was a part of my freshman year, um, and as mentioned previously, 
I took an active role in leadership in, in several organizations, uh, SAB, Alpha Phi Alpha, and Student Government Association. I learned a lot, and I believe that I was able to get the things that I wanted to accomplish here while I was on campus. Um, I did not seek leadership. When I joined, when I joined Saab, a, a fellow classmate of mine who, who came in with me, um, he, he brought up Saab, like, hey, let's, I, I think you would be great. Why don't you do it? Eh, okay, I'll do it. I get in first meeting. They're trying to hold elections for positions. And you know, I get nominated to, to be a fundraising chair. And I'm like, I don't know anything about fundraising. I don't, uh, I don't like to ask people for money because I don't like people asking me for money. So um, I don't think it's good. I want to turn it down. But you know, other members kept pressing, and, and more members kept saying that they weren't going to do it. Somebody needed to do it. And that simple phrase got me into so much <laughs> later on. But just going back to Saab, Fundraiser, uh, fundraiser chair for my first year there uh, with Saab, and then uh, fast forward one year, and they're holding elections for president, and they're saying, "Hey, man, you know, you did a great job with fundraising. You know, I, I feel like I did just as well as the last guy did the year before me. I, I didn't do anything special. You know, we we hold a few basketball tournaments, we wash a few cars, you know, we we sell." different, you know, candies and all that. Like, we, don't, we didn't do anything special. Oh, well, you should be president. Uh, I'm more comfortable being vice president. I never led. I never uh, uh, led anywhere. No, uh, you should be president. Um, nah, nah, that's okay. That's okay. Then it's, well, if you don't do it, uh, then nobody else is going to do it, and, you know, the organization's going to fold. I'm like, I'll, you know, I tried to take their bluff. I'm like, all right, you know what? Well, I guess it's gonna fold then. And you know what these guys did? They literally submitted paperwork <laughs> to the office, or what was shown to me. I don't know if it was actually submitted, but they showed paperwork submitting when, they're, when they were folding it because they realized that they didn't have leadership. And I believe it was just a ploy. I don't think they really turned it in, but they showed that to me, and I was like, they are, they are tripping. You know, we have capable leaders here, and I. I just, I just assumed the responsibility of being president that following year and, and implemented several programs, became more involved with the community, um, definitely getting involved with community service, and I feel like I did a good job, you know, and the following, well, actually during, during my presidency, that is when I joined Alpha Phi Alpha. And immediately, I became president of Alpha Phi Alpha because I was president of Saab. I was already holding a leadership position while my other uh, fraternity brothers were, were not holding uh, leadership positions anywhere else. So then it became, if you don't do it, <laughs> nobody else is going to do it. I'm telling you, this phrase, I'm not, I'm not lying to you, this phrase was used continuously throughout. And that followed me through SGA. SGA, I'm a senator one year. I'm just enjoying getting, getting the word out there, encouraging other people to get involved with campus, and letting students know that you have a voice, communicating with the principal, uh, the principal, the president, communicating with the president, and um, communicating with employees of the University System of Georgia, other boring stuff. But, you know, I just, I, 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 I was just fine being a regular senator, voting on my meetings and going about my business. That next election, one guy was, uh, one guy had the, um, the interest of, of being a president and I disagreed with his views. And once I realized nobody was, that he was gonna run, a, run unopposed, that's when I said, no, I, I need to run. Uh, I ran, I won, and I was elected president for two years straight. Um, I feel like I, I left a, a good mark uh, for SGA and for the other student organizations um, that I was a member of. Um, 
But what I, <clears throat> and I know that without, uh, without me even explaining to you, I know I touched on the academics earlier, and academics is always, will always look good on your resume. Your student organization involvement can help you out in your early years, in your professional entry level positions as well. I've had several interviews where um, employers are actually asking you questions about what, what have you done with this organization when you were a leader or when you held this position or when you did this. I see that you have this event on your resume. What did you do when you did this? Some employers actually encourage their employees to be involved in the community. If you're involved in the community in college, you may continue that uh, outside of college, or you may not, you may get tired of it, but there's nothing wrong with experiencing that. Nothing wrong with experiencing understanding people, getting to know other people. If I didn't volunteer and, and work in a community, I may not have the skills or the ability to communicate with anyone. So you want to definitely harbor that and use those traits as you progress here while you're at GSW. If you are currently a member of, uh, of any student organizations or, or you have a desire to join one in the future, understand that whether or not you believe you're a leader, you may end up being one. So be willing to take control. I told you in several instances the phrase, if you're not going to do it, nobody will. Also, I disagree with this individual, their topics, their, their points of emphasis. Let me run. They're running unopposed. I don't want that. If no one else will run against them and change the course, I'll do it. Um, <clears throat> but I, I wanted to um, make sure that I strongly express the importance of, of staying together. Ha building a bond in your student organizations is important. We all know that. But I believe that if you build a bond with individuals who have your same college major or have a similar major of study, that you guys can grow together. There's no reason why a group of finance majors should fail the same course. When you have access to the library, there's no reason why a group of biology students should fail the course. Stay together, work hard, be willing to communicate with others. I understand that everyone is not outspoken. I understand that some people are just reserved, mild men. But those individuals need that group as well. And you need it. If you're one of those that are reserved and you want to keep to yourself and you don't know what to do or what to say, you need that group. And that group needs you. Because three people can listen to the same lecture, or all of you can listen to the same lecture, and all of you will get different things from this one lecture. You may focus on one sentence. Somebody else may take a sentence a different way. Somebody else may have heard something that they didn't hear. But what I'm saying is that if you come together in a group and you talk, some, talk amongst yourselves, you can talk about what's going on in the classroom. You can, you can, I've, had, I've had professors here where we study what the professor lectures every day. And he tells you, the test that I give you will be about the lectures I give every day. And guess what's on the test? The book. He doesn't give you book assignments. He does, and I'm not going to name anybody, because they may still be teaching here. But, <laughs> but if you stay together and you seek advice from each other, you can grow together. I'm not saying that individuals who have that same major need to meet every week. I'm not saying you have to meet every month. You don't have to do that. But a simple text of, hey, what do you think about this test? Did it come to you easy? Someone else could have breathe through it, got an easy A, studied a little bit, can give you some study tips that'll help you because you're struggling. You're trying hard, you're studying every day, you know you're studying twice a day, but you may need assistance of someone else who is excelling. 
And just like they are excelling at that moment, they may encounter a chapter in that same book that they have no idea what's going on, but you're strong in. An example of that, I, I'm drawing back to accounting courses. Uh, on, in some accounting courses, it's math heavy, math intensive. I'm strong in math, I'm fine. But other courses, it's about the terminology and about the um, psychology of accounting, of business. Um, I don't like, I'm not a fan of reading. I'm a fan of reading now. You know, I, I, grew, I, I grew into that in college. But for those individuals who are weak in math, I can help them out. And I, I did. I, I did that. I encourage you to do the same. The way I got through my first midterm, I'm not going to say the grades again, but the way I got through my first midterm is that I sought advice from those people that were excelling. And I shared my, my tips to study, what I was doing, what would they improve, what, would I, what should I tweak, take their advice. And I encouraged um, study groups amongst those who were kind of struggling. We, we helped each other because I wasn't the only one who had a, a bad midterm. The other, other people had a bad midterm, but we stuck together that year. We made sure that we all passed the same class. Uh, the ones that we were failing, we all passed them. Um, I don't know their exact grades, but you know, I know I came out with that two A's, two B, and a C. You know, I finished strong. We ain't gonna talk about the midterm though. But um, I encourage all of you to do that. Really stick together. If you're in a similar major, you can help each other out. Be willing. If you see someone struggling, just ask them how they're doing. If you don't want to get all in their business, or you don't know how to approach them, a simple how you're doing will solve it. Let me see. I talked about uh, academic success earlier, and I, I mentioned student organizations as important. Uh, but there is a third part that's important for building your resume. Um, that third part is getting hands-on experience in the field of your desire, in the field that you're trying to obtain. Um, the, internships, uh, the internship route was something suggested from other classmates who graduated before me. They would come back, they would visit, and they would mention how they wish they would have had an internship or gone through an internship, learn what's going on with job functions related to what their major was in college. And I wanted the same thing. I wanted that advantage that they didn't have. They wished they had internships. I wanted that. At the time, uh, the School of Business didn't offer uh, many internships. I think they had one or two. Um, so I really, didn't, um, I really didn't go there because by the time I tried to apply, it's already taken. They already have one or two. So, Again, I could have stayed down. I could have said, all right, well, next year I'll apply. But no, I went out, I talked to business, business owners, talked to uh, accounting firm owners, and I mentioned that this is my field of study. I feel that I'm strong in taxes. I feel that I'm strong in compiling forms. I know I'm strong in math. Can you help me? Can you cultivate me? There weren't a lot of internship opportunities in Americas, and there may be a, little, uh, a few more now, but I was thankful for the, um, the local accounting firm that actually gave me an opportunity to, to intern there for the last year and a half of my time here. That was vital because the, the things I, I learned in the classroom, I could apply there, and the things that I did not learn in the classroom, I'm now aware of. I have a step ahead of someone else. So I encourage all of you that, I, I know that the School of Business and, and other departments, I think they have internships now. Uh, I, I know while I was in grad school, while I was already interning, the School of Business did open up a lot, a lot more internships, which is, which is good for everyone. It was too late for me, but it was good for everyone. And uh, they may have the same trend now, and other schools and other programs may, may have that as well. But I encourage all of you 
to, to seek internships. If one is not given from Georgia Southwestern, there are local individuals who are working the same field as you that are willing to teach you. While I was SGA president, I knew the benefit of my internship, that what it gave me, so I allowed my position, uh, I used my position to, to talk with our IT department, to talk with outside individuals, to get internships for other people. Our IT, our IT department at the time, they were low in, uh, in employment. We had so many issues with our IT back then, and I don't know how it is now, it may be superb, but we had a lot of issues back then, and IT's response at the time was, we don't have the manpower. I knew that internship benefited me greatly. Recommended that, and we, we developed a formal process to get students in. Uh, we were able to get a few students in to intern with IT, and that helped them. Internships aren't exclusive to business. There was a biology major who was fine with classroom, home, study, classroom, home, study. But at the time, your science majors are not getting you out in four years. I can't speak for today, but at the time, they may get you out in five years. So I encouraged that biology student to talk with someone locally in the Cordell area. Uh, there was a, science, a scientist working out, out there in Cordell. They interned with them. They have that on their resume. Coming out of college, I, have t I had two years of working experience that I could sit down in front of anyone and I can hold my hat to. I can say that I learned this. I performed that function. I was in charge of this. I helped resolve that. I can explain all of that. I don't want anyone to feel that by the time if you're a senior, if you do not obtain an internship, it's not over. I don't want you to think that because there are plenty of in entry level positions that will look at your academics, will look at your student involvement, that want someone hungry, that has not learned the system yet because they want to grow you from the ground up. But there are some employers that want you to have a little experience. One position that I did not get was, was a position, this is recently as well, this may have been, with, this may have been within a year. One, one position I did not get uh, was a position that I was overqualified for. I did not feel overqualified. Actually, I think I met the requirements. It asked for three years of experience doing this job function. I had exactly three years of experience doing this job function. I walk in and in the interview and I'm getting the hint and it confirmed later that what they wanted was someone who had a year or two and they could really grow because they wanted to mold that person. Every employer is looking for something different, but you still want to give yourself the best shot. You, you want to give yourself the best grades. You want to be involved in student organizations. You want to show that you can be active, that you can step out and represent for your employer as an able-bodied person willing to give back to the community. And most importantly, you want to get as much experience as you want. So if you can obtain a, uh, an internship, then so be it. Um, <clears throat> In adulthood, uh, your group of friends, uh, you're, you're young adults right now, but your group of friends in college they're usually the ones you end up trusting the rest of your life. A few of them fall by the wayside, but majority, you know, everyone is keeping in touch. You, what I want to encourage you guys to do is to be open to network with your classmates here at Georgia Southwestern, and even if you network outside of campus, but develop a network. A network can include those people who have similar majors that, um, that work in different areas because that network can prove vital. It is about who you know in the real world. So by, if you're a biology major communicating with a psychology major, major you're, you've been friends since freshman year, 
you used to stay down the hall from each other. You're always, you always kept in touch. As you guys graduate, those connections can benefit each other. One person may be down, one person may need some form of employment, but their best friend just knows the perfect person to hire them. Networks are important. I am thankful that I can say that I know people who are doing great things in their lives. There are attorneys that came from George Southwestern. There are people that are entrepreneurs now. They own a music management company. They own a marketing company. They're actually invested in food industry. There are people doing multiple things that I know, and I'm glad I know them. Because if I need something, if I need advice on something, I'll ask. And if they need it, they ask. <laughs> they will ask. But I encourage you to build your network because it is important. It proves vital to your professional stability. Um, I, before, before I uh, finish off, I, I want to remind everyone about self-evaluation. Um, I touched on that beginning of the conversation. In self-evaluation, it's important that you look at what's going on, right or wrong, in your current situation. You try to find ways to improve what's going on. What can you improve? There's some things that you can't improve that are out of your hands. But what can you improve? Develop your course of action. Develop your plan. That's most important. Because then you'll need to execute that plan as close to design as possible. I do want to remind everyone on that because it, it, it proved vital for me in college. And I still use it. I, you still use it today. I still use it in the working world. I'd like to thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And I hope that you remember most of what I said or um, stay encouraged. And my encouragement is that I want you to work together. Be willing to work together, guys. OK? Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, let's give him another hand, please. Thank you, Mr. Andrew Robinson, for bringing such a wonderful message. I also would like to thank all of the faculty, staff, administrators, and especially the students who came out for this short program. And I hope he gave you words of wisdom. Uh, AAMI is only a small part of many organizations on this campus to make this campus better. We are all a family. Remember what I told you before the program started. I would like for everyone to stand up for a minute. AAMI's motto is academic excellence and social responsibility. So what I want for you to do now is repeat after me, and when you say it, I want the people downtown to hear you. Spread the word, Spread the word. across the nation. This is going to be, going to be a, great generation. a great generation. Thank you all. Reception, go that way. Thank you.